Hey y'all, welcome back to Victor's the Key. My name is Zen. I'm just doing a quick upload to just talk about the dangers of not resting as a prophet or a prophetic um, voice or being a fivefold minister, but specifically to prophets and those that are also, um, we walk in the prophetic. You may not walk in the office of a prophet, but you are prophetic. And you know, you don't want to misuse your gift and abuse your gift for what God wants to do. So, God was just speaking to me about how he called me and commissioned me. And when, you know, he spoke to me about my calling, being born a prophet and all those different things. But when God first gave me the word about a prophet, he spoke to one of the types of mantles or, or within my mantle or faculties within my mantle of the office of a prophet and the type of prophet I would be was the seer realm and the seer dimension. You know, that's one of my strongest ways that the Lord communes with me through visions, through trance, through dreams, transportation, translation, you name it. I've experienced pretty much a lot and there's still more to uncover right with God. But one of the main things I want to talk about is you need to learn to really rest because if you do not rest as a prophet of God or a prophetic voice or and you're called to minister to people out of the gift of prophecy, out of the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and then you're also called as a prophet of God to prophesy over people and everything else. And if you don't rest, you have to be careful that you don't misuse and mishandle your gift and then you're prophesying not what the Lord said, but you're prophesying to somebody's soul. And you're prophesying out of, also out of your unhealed soul or unwounded soul. So what do I mean by that? When the Lord called me as a seer prophet, God had spoke to me out of Samuel and out of Ezekiel. Specifically, he spoke to me out of Ezekiel. That was my encounter similar to Ezekiel December 2020. But before December 2020, September of 2020, I had an encounter with the Lord, of course, like Elijah. And I remember God was saying, Elijah, come out of the cave. I was having a going back with God. And I'm like, I'm not Elijah. But I, had, I was taken up into that encounter because those two type of of prophets was also part of my mantle makeup and my mandate and how God called me as a power confrontational prophet, which I later learned um, in February of 2022 when the Lord gave me my actual prophetic destiny, the type of prophet I was, what I was called to do, my mandate basically up until the t day he calls me home. But when God first spoke to me, he spoke to me as a seer prophet and also being an intercessory prophet, right? That's a part of my mantle makeup. But within all of those different things when the Lord called me in regards to the way he called Ezekiel and because Ezekiel was a seer Joseph was a seer um, prophet as well as Daniel was a seer prophet but also Ezekiel was a priest that's just a whole nother story in the subject itself but I just want to talk to you about the dangers of being able to not rest and not allowing your body to rest your emotions to rest your will everything because what you're doing is basically people are pulling on you and what you can do is you can risk the dangers of giving them a prophetic word word out of their soul and also out of yours because of the compassion. Sometimes your compassion can outweigh your discernment and you want a thing to manifest in somebody's life. You want it to come to pass, but you have to make certain what you are speaking is what God desires for that individual, even over yourself. So the Lord brought me back to Ezekiel 14. Like basically he gave them over to where they was receiving the prophetic words of lies and everything else that was not of God, but God allowed it because he was showing them that you want your soul, you want what you want, this is what you're going to get, but I promise you it will corrupt you because it's not my perfect will, it's not my way, it's not how I'm calling things to get done. And then one of the things he also spoke to me about besides Ezekiel 14, which I, re I speak about basically what prophets are turning into basically diviners and they're turning into a place where they're giving prophetic words out of their soul and all that other stuff. But God brought me back to the time when he had me reading Ezekiel in 2020 and he specifically brought me to Ezekiel chapter two. And this is when he commissioned Ezekiel. And that was also in my encounter in December of 2020. And I read it, it says, and he said unto me, son of man, and stand upon your feet and I will speak unto you. And the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him who spoke unto me. So the Holy Spirit was now within Ezekiel. And he said unto me, son of man, I send you to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day for they are imputed 
children and stiff hearted, right? So they're hard hearted and they will not hear God. I do send you unto them and you shall say unto them, thus said the Lord God. And they, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. So God was also explaining to me, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what they feel in. I don't care if they flesh does not like your word. I don't care if they be offended because it is you that speaks for me. You are a prophet of the Lord. You are not a prophet of Baal. You are not a prophet of nobody else. You're not even a prophet for you. That was also within my prophetic destiny. I'm a prophet of the living God, the God that kills and make alive, the God that heals and wound, the Lord that does everything in his sovereignty and is in control. And they said, and you, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with you, and you do well among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So God already knew the people I was assigned to, the way I would minister the gospel, I would preach the gospel, because Ezekiel also was a preacher as well. And you shall speak my words unto them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for they are the most rebellious but you son of man hear what i say unto you be not you rebellious like that rebellious house but open your mouth and eat that i give you so god was also giving me a warning as the way he warned ezekiel regardless what happens you speak what i say but you don't speak when i'm not speaking you close your mouth and and when i look Behold, and a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book therein. Basically, the burden of the law was being engrafted into Ezekiel, and God was giving him revelation from his seer knowledge, from his insight and foresight of what God was about to do through his life. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourners and woe, right? And this is basically all of the things that was going to happen in that time period and time to come through Ezekiel's prophecy. But one of the main thing I want to tell you that you can become a person where you are prophesying out of your flesh, out of your soul, or prophesying to people's soul. If you don't rest because everybody is pulling on you, people have to understand that you don't belong to them. You belong to God and you do serve them through serving God. And you as a person that are receiving the word, you have to learn that God has to stretch you to challenge you to run to him not to the other person. We are not your savers. Prophets are not Jesus. Prophets are not the savers. Listen, yes, they save nations. They birth nations. They do great things. Prophetic voices as well. But you are not God. God is God. All we are are yielded vessels that are yielded unto him to do according to what he desires for a person like. So if you don't rest, everybody will start coming on you, pulling on you. I know you're this great gift. You used amazing. You use mightily. But you got to remember that we are mere humans. We are mere mortals. So if you do not understand the capacity of where you're always in the supernatural, always in the supernatural, you can experience a burnout. And within that burnout, you can begin to process prophesy outside of the will of God, outside of the timing of God. And also you can begin to prophesy to that person's need and necessity of wanting to get met and manifested in that moment when the truth of the matter is all you need is God. Everything you have is in God. Everything that you are going through, God strategically placed it that way because there's a moment when God's Kairos time will meet the chronological time, but it has to be his time and not ours. And you know, that's why so many people get disappointed by their prophetic words. They don't fight for they prophetic words they don't contend because you're frustrated with your humanity and it, it, it's hard i get it you know but at the same time what the lord was impressing upon my heart zen you need to rest i remember when the lord recently forced me to rest with COVID and then, you know, I immediately got healed, but I learned from that and I stayed down. And then recently I was feeling um, unwell yesterday and God was like, that's because your body's been going. And that's because me and God have been having our own moments of basically as he's creating balance within me and what he's calling me to do and what he's calling me to basically fulfill in the earth realm. So I just want to encourage you and I want to warn you as a prophet of God, are you a voice um, that is used by God, but all prophetic people. But if you know that God is telling you to do a thing, basically that's when you speak. But then when God tells you, hey, you're human, it's time to pull back, rest. People are going to have to respect that. They're going to have to understand that if they choose to get offended, then that means they made you your idol 
you the their idol in their life. They've made you God or vice versa. And I'm not going to do that for nobody. I will not become nobody's God. I will not become nobody's idol. You better go ahead and shut that all the way down because I, I only fight for God. I only ride for God. I'm loyal to God. You should be loyal to God. Your loyalty is only to God first and then those he put you in community to. But again, God will always override and trump everybody else, period. So you have to have that mindset. But when God allows things, it's because God wants you to encounter him and go to him and seek him. Yes, prophets are great, but they are not God. They are not God. They are just officers. They are just called to do what God told them to do, but they are not God. We are humans. We can make mistakes. We can get into error, especially when dealing with your soul. And you need this season to rest or you need days to rest so that your soul can get nurtured, so that the Father can minister to you as you minister to him, so Jesus can replenish, replenish you like at the well, and then you can begin to replenish others. So what good would it do if you're burnt out? Then you're prophesying from an unhealed, a critical spirit, or you're prophesying from dangerous um, territory where you're getting into divination because people are crying out, I want God to do this now. When God knows you cannot handle if he gave it to you right now because the real truth of the matter, do you have the capacity to carry the word that God is doing in your life? Because if you don't have the capacity to birth it, I mean to carry it for a while until it is birthed, what makes you think that you're going to take care of it when you get it? What do I mean by that? When you take care of a baby, you don't take care of it once it come out of your womb. You start that process as a mother feeding it, nurturing it, taking care of your body, taking care of yourself until that baby comes into full time to make certain there's no complications, there's no issue. That's the same way with a prophetic word. That's the same way with prophecy. That's how God communicates his word to be fulfilled in the earth, right? Because God word words was the one that framed the world, right? By faith in God. And that's the same thing. You got to have your faith in God in order to maintain, to keep on going, to keep going through no matter what's happening. So I'm just encouraging rest. Rest if you're a prophet. Rest if you're a fivefold minister. Rest if you're a prophetic voice. Rest because I'm telling you, there are things that can only be accomplished when you rest in God. And I've seen it. God hand move when I decided to just rest and not just keep going, going, going. And it allowed me to be replenished. It allowed me to stay in the realm where I can constantly give the heart of the Father, whether it's in harshness, correction, easy, whatever it is that that individual need. It's all about God and what he wants to do in them and also within myself. So I just pray that this video blessed you and that you have a good day wherever you're watching it.